stop and consider what do you need to go over? Um, I'm going to flip through here and you take a look at it and tell me what you feel unsure about. How about this? Do you feel okay about this? I guess so. Because nobody's saying anything. Oh, and sorry. That's, and that's I, great. I can minimize for a second. Um, I, on my test, I missed four questions, but I got like three of them that I got partial credit on. So like, on the practice exam. I'm trying to see which ones I missed real quick. Oh, that's a good idea. If you give me a moment, I can answer those questions. Well, OK, until you get started, I do want to talk about this. There's one tricky part. Here where it says for F of X equals one. When you're asked something like that, where X is in the parentheses and one is given. What that means is they're giving you y equals one and you have to find the x's, excuse me, that go along with that. What are the x's where y equals one? Four and six. Yeah, good. So here's y equals one. And the y, that, the x that goes with that is four and then y equals one here. And the x that goes there, the x that goes with that y equals one is six. So you would answer four comma six. Okay, and I'm gonna keep flipping through. You have not completed it, I know. It's because I'm bad. Do, do I want to leave? Yes. How about the domain of a rational function? Feel okay about that? Okay. How about this? Evaluating the function with a graph, like f of two. Here's x equals two. You go up to the graph and then over to the y-axis, so the answer to this would be four. That's how you do it when you're given a graph, but you're not given the function. Here's f of four. That would be six. So I would put a six there. How do you feel about this? People often miss that. They get the most important part right, the rise well, over the run, but yeah. then they forget to multiply by 100 to change it to a percent, and then they forget to round it. So there are two things you usually have to do. Now to this one, I expect you're gonna get a rounded answer right away. But to some of them, you don't, and it tells you how many places to round to.
Okay. Same here. Now here it says to round to the nearest percent. So it's really the perfect calculator problem. Here we have the rise is 2.2 feet and the run is 5.3. So I'm going to say 2.2 divided by 5.3, enter. Then I'm going to multiply by 100 times 100, enter, and then if I have to round to the nearest percent, uh, that would be either 41 or 42. Uh, the five is big enough to make the one go up to a two, so I would answer 42 and hope that that's correct. Yes. Okay, so don't forget to round when it tells you to round. Rate of change. I found my issues that I had on my test or practice okay. exam. Uh, <laughs> minor graphing, I missed 13, 18, 24, and 31. Well, let's go do it. 13. 13. I, I honestly don't know what. I don't remember what I did. Okay. Yeah, these are very tricky because you have you're only allowed to use particular points. If you use it, if you just find any two points on the line and graph them, you'll graph the line. But that's not how to use this method. So what you would do here is, is, oh, click, there I go. To graph this, I would start at two on the y-axis. Well, it's kind of not letting me, is it? Click the graph, oh, that's why. I didn't choose the tool. I'm going to be graphing a straight line. Now, zero, two. And then I go up 10 and to the right nine. So, up 10 would be, let's see, from y equals two, that would be to 12. And then over to the right nine, so two, four, six, eight, nine. Uh-uh. Nine. Okay. Let's see if that's right. Yeah. Honestly, I think when I was doing, because yesterday I did my practice exam, and I also, like, um, redid a couple of assignments where I didn't know what I was doing. So I think at that point I was kind of just burnt out on math. Yeah. And it's the reason why I got this one wrong, I think. Probably. I mean, that's so easy. And it's also, you've got to yeah. be so picky and so exact. Yeah. And on number 18, I think I got it wrong because I did it for parallel and not perpendicular. Right. Let's do that because people have trouble with it. OK, so we're given the line. This is number. Number 18. Two X plus nine Y equals seven. 
and you always have to find the slope of the given line. It's there for you to find the slope. So I'm going to subtract 2x and subtract 2x. So I'll have 9y equals negative 2x plus 7 and then divide by 9, divide by 9, divide by 9. So the slope of this line up here is negative two ninths. Now we have to find the equation of the line perpendicular to this line, and it goes through the point nine, negative nine. So y minus y one equals m times x minus x one. So y minus negative nine equals, and I'll come back to the slope, x minus nine. Then, um, okay, the slope of this line is negative two ninths. The slope of a line perpendicular to this line is going to be the opposite sign, so positive, and the reciprocal. So 9 over 2. So we'll have y plus 9 equals positive 9 over 2 times x minus 9. And then I multiply. by the denominator of the fraction because I want to get rid of the fraction. And over here, the twos cancel, leaving me with nine over one, which is nine. Wait, but that's. I didn't even know you could do that. Oh, yeah. That's it. OK. It's a neat trick. Yeah. I was just dealing with the fractions the whole time. Well, that's good if you can do that. Well, I didn't know I had another option, so. Oh. <laughs> okay, I'm going to distribute 2y plus 18 equals 9x minus 81. And then subtract 18 and subtract 18. Eighteen minus eighteen is zero. So on the left I'm left with two Y. And on the right I have nine X minus ninety nine. Ooh. And then divide by two and divide by two and divide by two. So it's just a little quicker than having to deal with the uh, the fractions or or not. It all depends on what you want, what you feel good with. OK, now let's see if I got that right. Nine. X minus ninety-nine over two. Yeah. Yeah, I think my issue was just I didn't pay attention that it said perpendicular. And I did it as a parallel line, so that's, I think that was my issue. And that's easy to do. Really super easy. 
OK, we're now about to get into systems. How's everybody feeling about systems? And oh, the basketball player. Want to do the basketball player? Sure. Why not? I didn't have problems with this one. Did anybody have problems with it? I just kind of thought of it as the same thing as um, the problem that we did with the guy that had two jobs, job A and job B. It's kind of similar to that, like the way it it's worded. So I just solved it kind of like that. It's exactly the same. Well, I think I think you all are just too smart to be in this class is what I think. No, you're just a good teacher. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. All right. No, seriously, like you are a good teacher because the teacher I had last semester was horrid and did not care that her students failed or that they didn't understand and you actually care. So. Oh, I blush. You're, you're a good I teacher. blush. OK, do you want to do one of these or have you got this down? My experience has been students pretty well get the graphing, but they still have a hard time with the vertex. Uh, so, what about 24? What was that? I don't remember. That's this. Want to graph that? Yeah, I don't know why I got it wrong. Cause Probably the line. The line well, has I to be that, dashed. Yeah, it has to be dashed because uh, it's not equals to. Right, exactly. That's it. Uh, but yeah, let's just do it real fast. OK, so. Um, X plus Y. Is less than five. Now I'm going to come down here and turn it into an equation so that I can graph just the line. Then I worry about the shading. Oops, afterwards. So, these are pretty easy. If X is zero, then Y is five. If Y is zero, then X is five. And so, one, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five. And the line, that's, for me, that's the tricky part. Forgetting that the line is dashed or knowing it's dashed, but just, it's so easy just to draw a line. But no, this has to be a dashed line. OK, so now you're done with the line part. Now we go back to the uh, um, inequality part, and that means we have to shade. So I choose a test point, which will, of course, be my favorite, favorite point in the whole world, zero, zero. Then I take this zero and put it in for X and this zero and put it in for Y. So I'll have zero plus zero is less than five. Zero is less than five, is that true? And the answer is yes, it's true. So.
high shade over here. Now, just psychologically, it probably would have been better to shade green since they're shaded green. But I believe A would be the only one, the only graph that fit because it's dashed and it's shaded on this side. This is a solid line over here. So I'm gonna go with A and check my answer. There you go. Okay, now save that. And see, I'm going to work on doing my own little sketch of this. Oops, back up. There we are. We have to graph it and we have to find the vertex. So, if we have x plus y is less than or equal to 4, solid line, and x, mi x minus y is less than or equal to 2, which also is a solid line. Then I can start working on this. Let's come down a little more. Take X plus Y equals four. And again, this is one of those super easy, 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 easy lines where you can actually do it in your head. Let's see, if X is zero, Y is four. If y is 0, x is 4. OK, and while I'm at it, how about over here? Um, I just want to get my two points, that's all. I'm not going to do anything fancy yet. OK, now x and y. If x is 0, then we're going to have zero minus y. This is a little trickier. Uh, negative y, which is negative one y, equals two, and either multiply or divide both sides by negative one, does exactly the same thing. y will equal negative two. So I put the negative two here. And if y equals zero, then we'll have x equals two. So now I have my two sets of points I can go and graph. So one, two, three, Four and one, two, three, four. And that'll be a solid line. Okay, and now I do have to do my shading, it's easier if you do it one line at a time. So if I can choose, and I can, zero, zero is my test point. Then we'll have zero plus zero is less than or equal to four, which is true. Zero is less than four. So I'll shade in the direction of the true.
Okay. Now. The point zero negative two is down here, and the point two zero is here. And now, once again, I can use zero, zero. Will it give me a true or a false for the green line? So zero minus zero is less than or equal to two. We will get a true. So I, I grade, I grade, I shade toward the two, toward the true side. I need to make all the markers this big. What is, isn't that delightful? Okay, now where the colors overlap is in here, so that's where I'm going to drag my paint bucket. I don't have a handy paint bucket right now. Okay, so. Now. Now that looks for all the world like it's the point one, two, three, one. But I'm not going to believe it till I see it. Okay, to find the vertex, we go back to the lines Okay, we're going to have to find X and Y because we need the X, Y point. Um, and I'm going to use elimination because this begs for elimination. Y minus Y is zero. So 2X equals six. X equals three. So we foretold that. Now, if I use X plus Y equals four, and I say, well, X is three, then yes, Y is going to be one because three plus one is four. Or you can subtract three from both sides. 4 minus 3 is 1. So yeah, you almost never are able to really see clearly, and only if you do it on graph paper, what the vertex is going to be. Okay, so now we have everything we need to just bring that knowledge over here. OK, now I wonder. Yeah, all right, now that is ridiculously small. It's not ridiculously small. I've seen them be smaller. And I wish, I wish. I could make it bigger without wrecking it. So let's just do this. Zero, four, and four, zero. I click on the line and zero, four, and four, 
zero. Now, I don't like that. Four zero. Damn it. Four zero. Do you see it in the upper right hand corner? Four zero. OK. Now, um, what was this? Yeah, zero negative two. Zero negative two. And two zero. All right, and I'm going to drag my paint bucket. Here. You've got to do an extra little click. Used to be you could just drop it, drag and drop. Not anymore, they changed it. I thought it was cool. All right, now, 3 1. Three, comma, one. Okay. It's a much more difficult procedure if you if you actually do everything on here. So I find it so much easier just to do it on paper and then transfer that information over here. The My Math Lab method for doing this is you graph your two lines, then you find a test point in each area, and you test each test point, and the area you finally choose has a test point that gives you a true for both of these equations. Which is certainly doable, but it's harder. Certainly not as quick. I guess it depends on your talents. If you if you're really good at algebra. And thinking things through that might be the better way for you or just coloring a piece of paper and then transferring the information. That might be the way for you. You should try both and see what suits you. Now I know probably almost everybody wants to do a matrix or do they? I want to do the, the I want to do it. Do it. Okay. I want a matrix. I dislike them and I'm not good at them. Well, yes. Let me insert two pages. Okay, so let's see what our beloved machine here comes up with. Aha. Okay. So let me come down there. So let's write this out. Negative, ah, negative 4x minus 9y minus z equals 
negative 18. They're all negative up there. Um, negative 8x minus 6y minus 2z, that is too ridiculous, equals negative 24 and 6x plus 9y plus c equals 22. Well, this is delightful because first I'm going to change it to a matrix and then I'm going to multiply row one and row two by negative one just right off the bat so that every, everything is positive because negatives scare people. And it'll also show you you can do that. All right, so here's matrix one. Now, the reason I don't just do it from the beginning, just say, well, all right, we're going to multiply everything by negative one and everything by negative one is kind of so that I have a paper trail that I can follow if I make a mistake. So negative four, what me make a mistake? Oh, really? Negative nine, negative one, negative 18, and negative eight, negative six, negative two, negative 24, and six, nine, one, and 22. And this is row one, and row two, and row three. Oops. There. Okay, now, because I want to keep a record of everything I do so that I can look back and see what my mistakes are, um, my recipe is going to have some individual steps. Negative one times row one. Negative one times row two. And I may just let it go at that. So I'm gonna have an extra matrix, but it's all gonna be for a good cause. All right, so we will have positive four, positive nine, positive one, positive 18, positive eight, positive six, positive two, positive 24, and six, nine, one, 22. Now, doesn't that look less scary without all those negative signs? I think so. All right, now, I'm gonna look at this and hope I didn't miss copy a number or something like that. And then I'm gonna write a recipe That will let me work with lines R1 and R2. And what I plan to do is multiply row one by negative two so I can have a negative eight. Negative two, oh, negative two R1 is going to be Negative two times four is negative eight. Negative two times nine is negative 18. Negative two times one is negative two. And negative two times 18 is negative 36. And R two 
is 8, 6, 2, and 24. That'll give me 0, negative 14, 0. That's not true. Oh, am I lying or what? Negative 12. and negative 12. Well, that's pretty cool. Negative 12 and negative 12. And that's really true. All right. So new row two. Matrix three. So this is going to be new row two. Right there. So zero, negative 12 and zero, negative 12. Now I can do that, which is what I usually do, because I know that at the end I'll be dividing by negative 12, but you could. And so I'm going to show you this. You could, while you're still over here, say, but I know negative 12 goes into negative 12. So I'm going to divide each of these numbers by negative 12. Which is what your book does. Not book, my math lab. Probably your book too so that our new row two, instead of being that, would be zero, one, zero, one. And you could do that just as easily. When it's nice and easy like that. But when it gives you a lot of nasty fractions, I think it'll just mess you up. You can save your division till the end when we're back solving. But anyway, row one, I get my new row one from here and it's the same as the old row one. And that looks like it tried to be negative, but it's not. Nonetheless, I'm going to scroll up and make sure. Yeah, we hit negative one with a negative one which gave me a positive one. Okay, always got to double check. Now six, six, nine, one, 22. All right, now, my recipe, got to go lower this time, because that's there. <sighs> okay, six, not, ah, see the ringing. I should always turn my phone off, just gets to me. I have to use row one and row three and get a zero there. So row one, plus row three. Now, four and six will both go into 12, and I can make one negative so that I could have 12 minus 12, or negative 12 plus 12. So I think I'll do that. I think I will multiply row one by three, so that I'll have positive 12, 
and row three by negative two, so that I'll have negative 12. So three row one is going to give me three times four is 12, three times nine is 27, three times one is three, and three times 18 is 54. Let's make sure. Three times eight is 24, carry the two. Three times one is three plus two is five. Okay, now this is the new row three. Zero, nine, one, 10. And row one and row two from the top. Four, nine, not the top, the one above. One, 18, and zero, one, zero, one. Okay. Now, I, to keep this zero, I have to work with row two and row three. Now, if I can make that a negative nine, I'll have negative nine plus nine is zero, so that's what I'm going to do. Negative nine times all the numbers in row two plus row three. That'll give me zero, negative nine, zero, negative nine. And row three is zero, nine, one, ten. Woo woo. Zero, zero, one, one. Woo -hoo! Okay. So now matrix number five. Row one, row two, row three, new row three, zero, zero, one, one. Ah, uh, zero, one, zero, one, and then. Four, nine, one, eighteen. So now, what does this give us? This gives us four X plus nine Y plus one Z plus uh uh equals eighteen. And at y, y equals one, and z equals one. So we're going to have row one, it's all we really need to look at. Um, four x plus nine times one plus z uh plus one times one equals 18 and so 4x plus 9 plus 1 
<laughs> equals 18. So 4x plus 10 equals 18. Subtract the 10, subtract the 10. 4x equals 8. Divide by 4, divide by 4. X equals 2. Woohoo! So, 2, 1, 1. Ha! All right. Was that wonderful or was that wonderful? Now, just a word of explanation. When you see the notes, you're going to see other stuff on top of it which cannot hurt you. Uh, this is from my Monday Wednesday class. And I figured why waste the paper because they've got the same problems on their tests. They being you guys. All right, in the waning moments of this class, are there any more um, questions? Or are you going to go make an A? Give me an A. Give me an A. OK, here's a function that equals X plus 6 if X is on the left side of 1 and 9 minus X if X is on the right side of 1. And when we're talking about where X's are located, we're talking about the X axis. So the easiest way to do this, number 29, is to draw an X axis. That is absolutely the easiest way. Just with your pencil, you know, not exact. Just um, one. One is the point at which the numbers change or, or the, the functions change. So over here, here's one. Over here, um, g of x equals x plus 6. And also over here, x is allowed to equal this point right there, 1. x equals 1. Over here on this side, g of x equals 9 minus x. So you just have the x-axis divided up. Now, you're being asked to find g of negative 2, that is g of x equals negative 2, and what g is at 1, which is a better way to say it than of, and what g equals at the number 5. All of these are x numbers on the x-axis. So negative 2 is going to be down here. We could go 0, negative 1, negative 2. So here at negative 2, and here at 1, and here at 5. 2, let's see, 2, 3, 4, 5. So right there. Um, so, 
since negative two is over here in this area on the left of one, you're going to use g of x equals x plus six to calculate the answer. So g of negative two is going to equal negative two plus six, which is positive four. And then one has to go has to go over here as well. So g of one equals one plus six, which is seven. Now on the other hand, five is over here. So it's going to use g of x equals nine minus x. g of five equals nine minus five, which is four. And that's how you do that. You don't have to graph anything on these.